Welcome to the U World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. Hi, and welcome to the U World Order Showcase podcast. Today, we have with us a special guest, Michael O'Connor. Michael is a life coach astrologer, which is kind of an interesting connection. So honoring both the themes and cycles of destiny and free will, Michael supports his clients to realize their full potential with a deep understanding of their natal chart within the realities of their actual life circumstances. I love this. I love the intersection between free will and your your natal chart, which kind of suggests that predestination is involved. And I think it's probably a combination of both because I definitely believe in life contracts where it, it the free will actually starts before we come. So <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you for having me on. Um, yeah, you know, uh, free will is a part of destiny. We're actually, I would go as far as to say, a core feature of destiny is to learn how to use free will uh, to, you know, be uh, responsible co-creators. And so we're always co-creating. We don't really create our destiny that is popularly kind of understood out there, but it's wrong. Uh, technically, I mean, mm -hmm. it may seem like we're creating our destiny, but we're genuinely co-creating it. Uh, and that co-creation co introduces cooperation, too. So it becomes a little less egoic uh, on the high side. So people become that much more, you know, cooperative with themselves and others. And that sort of attunement thing that, mm -hmm. you know, or alignment that more mystical types speak to. Uh, you know, we might all in some way, people more in an athletic world might talk about being centered in your core, you know, and all good, thing, all good things like that. And that's true physically, but being in alignment means you're in the, in the flow of your destiny. And one might argue, and this is where astrology comes in, consciously. The difference yes. being, you know, difference being that it's not an easy thing to measure, of course, because we're in the water, shall we, you know, say everybody's in their own water. So the subjective factor uh, is, as a matter of fact, I would go as far as say there is no such thing as objectivity, really. It's it's a, it's kind of an, a relative illusion we share because because every person subjectively psychically engaging with their own reality right so even though there's close shared experiences you know we're sitting together watching something we're sharing it but you're having a different experience than me right absolutely and, and it gets into that minuti but that subjectivity get, is linked to the word holism like the whole universe this is one grand continuum and uh, not only in the manifest outer universe, but dimensional, the inner dimensional planes that uh, are behind this outer manifestation, just like the computer has layers of technology within it, behind it, it's no different, uh, in a, but it gets metaphysical, of course, it transcends merely physics uh, and the, you know, that kind of, discussion of physics versus metaphysics and 
but the physicists are stuck in empirical measuring. Oh, we can't measure it. So, you know, so that, but if they try to claim authority there, well, you know, uh, we just have to study uh, the subtle senses where the, the five senses don't reach. And there you go, right? The whole world of discussion there. <laughs> purely with sound, light, uh, right? So it starts there. So so, so much for empiricism. No, empiricism does work in a very limited way. Even Einstein, when he was talking about his theory of relativity, that only actually works in the, the microcosm. It doesn't work in space. And they have a problem with that. Physicists have a problem with that. Yeah. It's uh, even Einstein, you know, like he's been po he's been used and popularized as the opinion of some, uh, you know, he's a celebrity, uh, you know, um, physicist. And um, yeah, the um, the whole notion of proving things with mathematics is kind of not really science. It's, it's mathematics kind of got in there and it's, it's kind of almost like imposed itself because science is more empirical but then of course metaphysics transcends the empirical doesn't exclude it of course it just includes it it's more inclusive metaphysics versus ironically where physics becomes exclusive it's kind of an ironic thing eh? the, the the human condition and the uh, kind of the um, leverage of uh, it's almost like a, it's almost like a massive psyop, really. It, it's almost it like really is. Nobody experiences reality the same. No two people. Exactly. Ever. It's exactly the point of the continuum of subjectivity. It's all one, and yet paradoxically. We each are unique. And so even when it comes to our astrology, I've always said, you know, look, how you embody your uh, archetypes, astrological archetypes, right? It's a way of describing it. Um, how you embody the archetypes is your way because you have your own soul, your own genetics, your own experiences, right? And of course, your own free will, which is ever there, choosing to accept or not accept or to advance or to retreat or whatever and while those things are woven into our destiny by probability like you said predetermination um the free will is that improv uh factor which you know can work for us but our free will ironically could be the very thing that causes us to blow it <laughs> You know, like we we sabotage with our free will as much as we uh, achieve uh, the or beat the odds, I guess, is, you know, we achieve the possible with our free will, but we can also, again, sabotage. So that's a, that's a double edged sword, a eh? free will. Um, it's like people that manifest things. Everybody's always manifesting. Yeah. It, it, manifesting gets this gets categorized as like this this woo woo thing that doesn't really exist. But what you think about is what you bring about. And there, it, and it may just be because you draw it into your, your sphere. It's like you magnetize it somehow and it's drawn to you so that you have these experiences about what you're thinking about. Um, and, you know, we think about good things and we think about things that aren't so good and, then we can end up drawing those to us. So it kind of falls in there with the whole free will thing is, is we have the, the ability to, to decide what we're going to focus on. Yes, exactly. You know, the, uh, that's right. The free will, uh, the thing about uh, the law of attraction and manifesting is one of the important things to remember is that we're, and this is where astrology comes in. We're manifesting from our subconscious also. That's the key. Uh, and the the astrology chart, as you suggested earlier, Jill, is the contract. It's a it's a, a astro code, and mm -hmm. it, it, you can describe it as a contract. We don't choose necessarily everything in the chart 
I don't believe because our choosing is subject to our karma. So that like we, at the end of our life, we, uh, and more specifically at the beginning of the next life, there's a, it's like, you know, when we die, we die physically, then etherically, then astrally, then mentally, according to the Tibetan and Egyptian books of the dead, you know, they, they recognize their stages um, mm -hmm. after the physical death. But then we go into kind of a, a resting place uh, for relative periods of time, sometimes for short periods, sometimes for hundreds of years, depends on the level of the soul and it, it is said. But then, yes, there seems to be a choosing, a choosing that starts to occur, but it's uh, kind of subject to uh, our karma. It says, okay, here's the karmic score. And I would offer it's rather something I've observed over the years that I feel quite strongly about is that we pick up where we left off. So if you leave the world in a lovely way, you'll arrive in a lovely way. But if you leave the world on a battlefield, you're going to arrive in a battlefield. So you don't just choose a battlefield. You It's because your mind state, when you left, is cut a kind of like a karmic imprint and it's waiting. And then you come in. But the what the soul does choose, I believe, in the chart rather strongly. Uh, and, and it's a complicated conversation, never one that can truly prove. But at least with a certain confidence, I say to people, you chose your sun sign. And then we can get into the fine print of that in like the sun being the focal point of the chart. At least that's true in Western astrology. Uh, and um, then, you know, I go and that is showing me if I get right into the nitty gritty of the sun sign. So I'm big on that zeroing. See that there's all kinds of ways of studying astrology. I'm a humanistic astrologer, which means I'm person centered, not mm -hmm. event focused i'm not interested as much initially in some predictive thing i'm interested in who are you why are you what are you dealing with where are you at you know where you're coming from means what motivates you where you're going to means what you're destined to so it's not a narrow thing and so humanistic astrology i would call quintessentially the astrology of a life coach because they're not trying to, because once you start predicting, which is fine, but it strays into now a different category of thinking that's not life coaching, because the life coaching wants to be in a, a conversation, right? Uh, a more of a dialogue based, how are you doing, where are things at, tuning into reality. That's what I meant. Want to know, you know, like I'm not here to. <laughs> And that person with their free will and their reality know where they're at, right? They know the score. It's, but to, to have the added support of the blueprint of that dynamic, and then I'll tell them, well, it's quite an amazing, so, astrology is such a powerful tool. It depends on the, the person and where we're at in our journey together, you know, but Usually, like, if it's a first time reading, they're like, okay, what? They can't even believe what I can show them. And I like to tell people, you know, I'm not, I think it's very exciting that there's psychics out there because they read minds. And I think that's very exciting. And then, you know, there's good tarot readers, all kinds of types of people doing different things, all very exciting, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I like to say, but astrology, imagine, is showing you what I just told you. And right down to how your mother was, how your father was, how your siblings are, how your relationships are, how your all this uh, karma, dharma thing. And I said, it's based on where the planets are positioned in the sky. Uh, and, and then we map it. And, we, and there, so people are like, oh, my God, you can see that, <laughs> you know, it's because. It is, it's so wild. I, I didn't really start getting into astrology and I didn't have my natal chart or my numerology charts done until I was in my 60s and looking back because you I get you like your... all of this no I'm almost 64 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, getting getting into just looking back at all of the the pieces because you get everything like everything up to where you are and then into the future where where it could go i mean it's just about potentials um okay. 
You bet. And and looking back at how I navigated those because I'm at this point now and it's there's a lot of water under the bridge. <laughs> it was it's interesting to me to see how accurate it was and and how I was destined almost to reach this point and and now all of these other things are 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 lighting up for me. It, it's it weren't it, meant to light up back then. Astrology can be compared like you know traditionally and classically what's the value of a map? Mm -hmm. The answer is very valuable. If you're at all a traveler, right? Okay, but I suppose if you lived in a small town, you didn't leave, it wouldn't matter. But it gets into this sort of mystical notion that we're, you know, as souls journeying through the earth school. It's not just through time and space, but that's true too. But specifically, we're journeying through the earth school, which, you know, like a school, it has uh, all the various classes and there's lunch and recess and gym and art class and all kinds of so it makes it kind of purposeful and fun. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, it, it where, I kind of lost where I was going with that. Um, the map. The map. So what astrology is truly, when you really understand it well, it's like your cell phone. It's got way more apps in it than you would believe. Like, in other words, though, there's many systems of astrology out there, you know, and I study them all at least enough to be familiar with them, whether it's Mayan or Vedic, Chinese, there's uh, uh, Tibetan, uh, there's um, what? Are there Southern there? Hemispheres? Uh, the Hemisphere thing is a kind of a different conversation. It, because the North Pole is the North Pole, it, seems like even a person born in Australia still they're the north as though they're born in the north pole still applies it's uh why exactly it's kind of another little um mind bender a little bit that one so it doesn't orient to the sky but but the point is there's all kinds of systems of astrology and I was going to mm -hmm. say there's druidic too kind of quite an interesting and there might be more that I haven't studied but there's other little branches like human design and uh, all these things, uh, all sort of sharing in a, an archetypal world of thinking. So there's a common denominator. Western astrology out of all of those systems is the only solar astrology. And the rest are basically lunar. All of them have value. You know, you get insights. I will venture that Western astrology is the most powerful, though, uh, but it does depend on the who's using it, uh, just like anything, a guitar, you know, there's Jimi Hendrix and then there's, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, okay, there you go, and me, uh, exactly, there's all, for example, there's all kinds of levels of expertise in everything, so, so it's all relative that way, but uh, Western astrology itself has many branches, so I'm I'm kind of a generalist in the sense that I can, because that's why as a life coach, uh, I created this uh, video, just the you know, slideshow action. I was saying life, what does life mean, right? And sure, it doesn't just mean, you know, get six digits in the marketplace. Uh, it means everything about what's important to us as evolving souls when you get really into it. And that's where uh, the particular branch of astrology I'm into, which is uh, humanistic, is where nay, it's it's actually humanistic astrology is it uh, uh, evol an evolution of natal, okay? There is natal astrology. Uh, traditionally, the astrologers even traditionally were very focused on prediction. So, so natal astrology or humanistic astrology or even evolutionary astrology, all of which I do, um, is more modern, actually. It's a, it's the, it's, while the horoscope for the person's always been there, they weren't as interested in the person as much as the event. But now the modern astrologers going back to, well, pretty much in the 20th century, it's the 20th century astrologers who broke the ground on uh, the more um, um, 
predictive. So in other words, if you even go to astrologers in the 1800s, um, they were very into prediction. They weren't so that much into helping the person know who they are and why they are. And, you know, it was more, this is going to happen. So, so this evolution of astrology into natal or what, again, is more technically called humanistic is very person-centered. And what it draws a person to do is really understand that natal chart deeply and if you do it, and I do know it very deep, it's not like rocket science, it's, it's learnable. Mm -hmm. But if you do, you don't even need to predict anything. You're seeing that person's, I mean, yes, the planets do make transits and that does create chapters in the cycles of destiny. So it's not like it doesn't matter. But, but even if you didn't do that, and if all you did was focus on that, uh, what happens if it's done well is the person gets aligned. They go, oh, wow. And people will say to me, and they have over the years, more than once, they'll say, wow. I mean, many times, it's almost like you gave me permission to be myself. And yes. I said, couldn't have said it better. So, I, yeah. I feel the same way. It was like, it was very freeing to realize that I, this is fundamentally who I am and yeah. it's okay. I was I came here for that yeah. reason. It, That's it. That's it. It's a very deep affirmational thing. As a matter of fact, my motto really, it's not as loud anymore on my website, but it's always been affirmation, inspiration, vision, strategy. That's why I thought the, the life coach thing, and I took a life coaching course with NLP years ago, uh, because I wanted to understand what they were, you know, what the angle was. And I got you know, certified, et cetera, <laughs> right there. Um, the, um, but what it came down to, according to that life coach teacher, uh, was it's significantly about rapport with, uh, you know, talk to the person. Who are you? How are you? What's going on? And a life coach is kind of like a supportive, cheerleading strategist, right? Strategist. There's if you bring in, so that's where affirmation, core inspiration. Oh my God, my life, and this is what I'm here to do. Uh, vision, which is similar, you kind of get a vision for your life, not just surviving. And then it gets into that strategy, and that's when it starts to roll up the sleeves, you know, uh, and. Uh, Get, that's where yeah it gets more practical uh, that's where the manifesting happens and manifesting is just materialization of stuff that's already in existence it just hasn't materialized yet yeah you know manifesting um it's kind of like uh i'm i'm a big advocate for authentic self-actualization that's my whole thing authentic self-actualization it's not who's to say and who's to judge, but if one, when you uh, realize or experience deep affirmation, that's all you, you tap your authentic self. Now, most people kind of have a vague notion of it. Okay, they do. But when they have it played back to them, and quite frankly, usually at least, in a more sophisticated way than they can frame because they don't have the objective, they don't have the practice, the insight, the all of the tool, they don't have that. Uh, then you're, you're helping like in a very affirmational way, and that's the key word, uh, they're reframing themselves. They're, they're getting, and, and the goal is, is always for that to be... Um, supportive of course that and so again the key word is affirmation when they hear that it actually has a healing effect so when i say it aligns them it brings things into a excited to be me feeling right that's what yeah. excites me when they get excited to be themselves i know i'm doing my job right and that's the beauty of it so it's not about bringing my interest is not about bringing attention to me. Uh, you know, I'll say, yes, I'm able to read this, but I can read it. I'll tell them I'm reading it. 
And if I'm telling you I can interpret it, but it is talking about you, right? So it's like that and it works well. Yeah. It's really fascinating. And it it's so timely. You were talking about the 1800s, but back in the 1800s, switches were still being burned at the stake. Yeah, exactly. The and, world has changed. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. And like it was, I think around the 20s, it seems that at least in the United States, and, and there are still there are still witch laws on the books in England, which I find I incredible. It. Yeah, you you know, um, it makes sense when you say the twenties. That's exactly a good true true point. Especially, it happens to be that uh, the uh, origin of the League of Nations, mm -hmm. which is nineteen twenty, actually, by the way exactly uh, in alignment with what you just said is was a very significant turning point and it of course evolved into the UN which itself is under its own evolutionary you know requirements to you know because it's a it's an appointed council not an elected and that's a bit of a problem to me <laughs> by the way um, but anyway the main point is that it was a step towards global conversation cooperation and uh it coincides synchronous synchronistically with as you just said a lot of new consciousness so it itself is a synchronicity of it but yes it gave rise to a whole legion of new thinkers uh and um those from all kinds of areas but very significantly in the world of astrology uh, and, and Western, this is where Western astrology started to really take off because it was only, well, you go, it does go back a little further, like when the planet Uranus was discovered and then, uh, uh, which was um, kind of in the 18th century and then in the 19th century, Neptune, and then in the 20th, Pluto, right? And then there's been others since, and it was more specifically, uh, Chiron uh, in 77. So it's all relatively recent that these other players have been introduced. And Western astrology is designed to incorporate them. Other systems, I'm not, I'm not sure if they can, I'm not 100 percent sure, but they're not, they're a little bit more set, a little bit more fixed. Um, mm -hmm. Even Vedic astrology, ironically, and it does at worst still adhere to a very predictive model. And of course, Vedic astrology is very focused on the constellations, but Western astrology is based on the sunlight. We divide the year by the light of the sun. Yeah. So it gets into this exciting thing when you get into that solar, it even seems... Vedic, uh, at Vedic astrology, lunar system is what i'm trying to say and it seems like the the more predictive and the older versions of it were more around royalty and around um nations or yeah around nations and not nations like we know them today because it was there was a period of time when it was more monarchy driven and monarchs are are groups of families they're families exactly. and tribes rather than what we have today and i was just talking to my husband about this the other day because it, it he he plays these war games <laughs> but we were talking about world war ii being kind of the last period when monarchs were fighting each other because after world war ii we started getting maybe with their dictators around but they're not really monarchies like there were monarchies that controlled the money and and controlled the assets and controlled the land um like there were before world war ii it, it it's just it was interesting to me to watch a very good point a very good point indeed that is very accurate and i think that now astrology is more focused on the individuals it feels like we've entered a period of time where instead of 
nations and countries and leaders being so, so important, we're now getting down to individuals. Each individual, recognizing the value of each individual in this huge tapestry that is is the collective reality and and helping the individual realize their full potential because when an individual realizes their full potential it impacts the everyone else around them and it it we we'll talk about raising the consciousness but it really does raise the the consciousness or reality of the whole collective as beautifully each, said yeah individuals activated nicely said yeah it's all part of the aquarian age energy that's coming in so technically i've done close studies i firmly believe we're not well put it this way the dawn moment of the age of aquarius i believe has not quite occurred we and interestingly enough according to my studies the very like in in earliest stage of dawn because dawn's a process right mm -hmm. is about 1920 and so uh, and according to that calculation interestingly enough i i had it different before i had a different number in my head and it was a significant year 1993 was a very that's what i thought for a long time was the actual dawning moment mm -hmm. but i changed it a little bit but it, it, that was a very significant feature of at least the dawn because that's the year that the internet went public, by the way. And it was a beautiful story about the day it did. It's interesting that the day of uh, that the internet went into public domain was a new moon in Taurus, which is the sign of foundations. Mm -hmm. And it was Earth Day. Uh, April 22nd uh, and uh, nine, uh, 1993. That's when it became officially <laughs> public. It was out there a bit already in 92, et cetera. But they, that, if you look it up, you'll see uh, April 22nd, 1993 as the launch. So that was very significant. So yeah, we're in this new vibration, even if it hasn't technically dawned, I think that it's dawning exact you know i think it's um at the end of this decade of uh, like the end 2029 winter solstice 2029 in other words the on the eve of 2030 which is interesting because that so happens to be the uh the timetable for the un uh to you know like the um What do they call it? The, well, they have, uh, they have there's plans uh, with the, I guess, I'm trying to remember what it's called. like Agenda 2030. Agenda 2030. That's what it is. Thank you. Yes, that's right. Agenda 2030. Um, quite obviously. And I wasn't trying, but anyway, I've done a whole study. I'm doing a, a master class here on the 17th of February. It's too bad this won't be aired before that, but um it will be all about the timeline of the age of aquarius and kind of an endeavor to prove but in the process of it, it it's a kind of an indirect way of teaching people astrology too so it's a fun thing you'd be really fascinating i'm gonna sign up for it you, you're a good <laughs> it's <candidate>. early still <laughs> for it me is. yeah 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 it is uh, and the, the replay will be available i'm sure somewhere it's a master class, which is designed to be uh, a you pay for it, not like a YouTube thing, because I don't have the energy to do the YouTube game, you know, to get it right. Yeah. And I neither do I want to give it away. So a master class is a kind of small fee, a three hour class. But yes, after that, it'll be on my website and people can go and purchase. And buy it. Yeah. The yeah purchase the right to see it exactly yes yes so that kind of leads us to if people go to your website they can also get sign up for your your horoscope. not newsletter that's the horoscope 
It's weekly. It is uh, the horoscope I do. Like I've been writing this horoscope since 1993, and I kind of have a sort of a knack for it. I have a degree in English lit, and I understand astrology mm -hmm. well. And I figured out also how horoscopes work, which uh, is quite wonderful all on its own. It gets into this very archetypal principle, uh, kind of mystical all on its own, ironically. And of course, it only works at a somewhat limited scale, but people still be quite amazed that I can tap into it at all. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm the only one, but I have been able to do it quite well. So yes, I do this weekly horoscope and it's one can take the, the paid version or they can have the free version. The paid version just gives, uh, I do a longer um, discussion each week of what's going on. So they mm -hmm. get more than their horoscope. They get, you know, a deeper psycho-spiritual, insightful, astrological look at the week. And then I do that every month and for the year. So that's what the, the members get. It's, it's a nominal fee and with it they actually get um discounts on their reading so it's designed if you get this much in readings well your membership's free uh that kind of thing do you include numerology the numerology part to it too or does it just yeah i do astrology? well in the in the horoscope i always talk about the universal year and the mm. uh, the universal month you can get right down to the universal day, but in other words, it's a simple thing that 2024 equals eight. So we're in a universal year. And I always tell people the reason it's kind of a really wonderful thing that it works at all. But I say the best rationale I can give you is that it's because we agree it's 2024. And mystically speaking, it's almost as though reality has made itself aligned to that. Like that's so, in other words, our co creation is happening on an individual and a collective level, which is sort of all uh, time is exactly. It's an agreement where we really do have the divine spark, so it gets magical, and that's where you get, like you say, you get into attraction and co creation. And so, I'm into all of that a lot as well. As you say, I do admittedly lean it in the direction of remembering uh, reminding the person that remember you're able to attract but your subconscious is attracting also so if it's not your dharma to attract big money you're not going to probably then that's a bit that may sound a little restrictive but it's like but the point is that the big money is not important what's important is that you're authentic because that it could be a hindrance. It could be a big problem for you, you know, suddenly now that you're burdened. So it's that tricky line, right? Of um, And it could be that you don't fulfill your destiny. Exactly. Yeah. You it'll you become lazy. <laughs> all kinds of things. You could become greedy, <clears throat> lazy, lost, corrupt, abused by others. It goes on and on. Yes. So it's not always the gift exactly. So it just be, it, it doesn't exclude the magic of co-creation, but it puts it in a more authentic alignment. And then you're co-creating according to your destiny and what would be otherwise called your true need. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of, you have to, I mean, if you get into a world of extreme poverty in some parts of the world, then it's that's another thing to talk about, right? And but even why are they there is another conversation. But in other words, so and did they choose it? You know, sometimes I I think we do maybe. choose the the struggles that we go through at some level before we come here. It's not well, like they it's, it's, uh, I would. It, somewhat somewhat i think uh I'm, I'm not sure i have to admit um put it this way karma is a law and you what happens is this is what i've come to figure out for myself as a spirit we're in the ocean of god we're one with the, the whole but as mm -hmm. a soul we're like a droplet out of the ocean that the souls like a that droplet has a little skin around it you know that's it makes it a droplet 
that skin is our subconscious mind. So that's where we get into the soul having a mind. It itself isn't mind. Like people will talk about the soul as energy and vibration. It goes, no, 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 no. no. The soul has a mind that is energy and vibration. Okay. And then, then that, but that mind, as soon as you're in mind, you're in duality. Uh, okay. So it's like known as the mind of God. You're in duality. Then you're subject to karmic law. So, so it's kind of a choosing, but the choosing has deep roots to it. Like, um, it's a, it's a deeper thing. Uh, some of the karmas in our charts goes back lifetimes. So we don't choose those. They're there waiting, but they need to be reconciled. That's what they mean by atonement. So this is a bit of a paradoxical conversation. Uh, so it, there may be like, okay, roll up your sleeves on the soul level, soul plan. But okay. it says, okay, you've got these karmas and you got, you know, the negative ones, and these are the good ones. And so, yeah, and, and, and it says, this is where you left off. And now the council almost is saying, we think you should become a Pisces <laughs> because according to what happened before and where you're at, Pisces would fit your need now very well. And, and, and by the way, we're going to be, you're going to be born not just as any old Pisces, you're going to be born on this day <laughs> with that exact degree and so forth. So, so it's just a way of saying, so it, it's see, in other words, in other words, kind of a bit of a paradoxical conversation, but we are the inheritor. See, we can talk about soul plan, but we can also say that in this incarnation, we are the inheritors of karmas we did not create, uh, but they they were a part of the continuum in the mind of your soul, mm -hmm. and they were waiting. So see how that's not entirely choosing, but not entirely not choosing. <laughs> it's a bit of a mixed conversation. So there you go. That's my, so it's, yeah. To think of it as the as we are individual humans we are made up of a bunch of cells trillions of them and yeah. each cell has a consciousness it's an it's a living entity individually oh. okay. and it has a purpose by definition a cell is a living entity yeah. oh yeah and it's a whole, we are it's a, whole, it's a whole unit <laughs> it's a whole unit and there's yeah. little communities that exist within our physical being and we kind of co-create with it as well but just as we are yeah. like that as a being i believe that the universe is like that on a grander scale you could call it gaia you could call it whatever but we are all just cells in this bigger picture and we all have a purpose but ultimately the purpose is directed towards the purpose of whatever the source is that we are part of yeah that's a good way of describing it yeah in holistic philosophy it's all holes within holes like the whole universe is filled with whole galaxies which have whole solar systems which have whole planets which have whole entities which have whole cells etc right uh and it's all part of a continuum of mind so invariably there's no escaping that we're part of something larger that's why co-creation and cooperation are the key words yeah uh, there is i like you know that notion that ultimately we're we're a droplet out of the ocean of God in, you know, we could say we're, some would say on a soul level, we're always in the, uh, at spirit, at the level of spirit, we're always okay. in the ocean of God, the oneness of existence. But as a, 
as an it, in, evolving individuated soul, were that unique unit of God experiencing itself back. Yes. Right. It, so, it has to do with the experiential aspect of. Yeah. And we get. Source. And the idea, right. The idea of the school we're in is uh, to learn to be a responsible co-creator. In other words, the responsible use of free will, which is through trial and error, pain and pleasure, basically, you know, the whole journey of that. And that's where the karma comes in. And then ultimately it leads to a graduation uh, point, uh, which is not, you know, um, there's sort of a natural evolutionary process. It's a model I follow, which interestingly enough, I discovered later was shared by the Buddhist philosophy, which is approximately 800 lives. There's a reason why we that number, but I won't go into it, but uh, and I won't try and overly defend it, but it's a model that it okay. takes approximately 800 lives to graduate from this school. And no, you can't sit under the Bodhi, Bodhi tree and accelerate it in it no uh, you can you can accelerate and facilitate your journey and uh, make it smoother that's called wisdom which is what life coach astrology is about it's about how to enjoy you uh enjoy your day enjoy your life be healthy feel fulfilled make meaningful contributions by being you right always about being you and uh doesn't hurt that if you're really doing it well, you're not only cleaning up karma from yesteryear, you're, you're uh, self-actualizing, which means now you're getting really good karma, especially to the extent that you are making meaningful contributions. Okay, so all of which will have a sort of an, both an acceleration and also a vibration raising effect. Right. Mm -hmm. So so, yes, those statements right there are significant to the whole purpose of a, of life coach astrology. It's to not help you align yourself with an external motivation of society, at, which at worst means you're selling yourself out on the marketplace and your values are shallow at worst. Right. Uh, it no, it puts you more in alignment, whether your destiny is just to be a great parent or whether you're here to be, you know, the president of a country, <laughs> whatever it is, um, make no mistake. The consciousness, which is kind of like karma knows everything <laughs> just to throw it in there like santa claus is watching you <laughs> so so it kind of comes with a certain sobering hey you know um sure so it kind of counters a little bit against just i can be have and do anything i want and i'd say oh why would you want that when you can be everything that you are at a high That's vibration sick. right so it's that kind of language that all kind of sneaks in there and it all becomes that's the beauty of astrology that it works at all and it does and it's like proves itself every reading you know i do i mean you know it's not like every reading is as good as every other because it depends on a lot of things uh the complexity of that person their bill our rapport all kinds of things but um but still mostly yeah uh people <laughs> it's kind of most enjoyable sometimes when I get the the 75 year old father who got a gift from his daughter and I tell him things like yep that's it you really I'll kind of tell them a bit of their life story how you've been they go you got me you know you're like yeah you're hitting the nail on the head that uh, they say it all the time right and 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 sure it's my ability but the fact is it's there it's it's written there <laughs> yeah yeah so that's the beauty. so yeah that's the whole story it comes to that understanding that the very fact that astrology works at that level okay and that's part of my interest therefore the whole game is exceedingly purposeful it's an ergo thing 
If this mm -hmm. works, like if we could, if I could tell you this, you can go away now knowing we have consciousness, we live in consciousness, we're spiritual beings having human experiences. There is a God force source, not of the Zeus kind of uh, anthropomorphic projection of mythology, no. But uh, there's definitely a divine source here and it all gets very full, satisfying to have those conversations, right? Because kind of, because, you know, people live with, um, we, we're driven but to to thrive and um, self-actualize ideally, but we're also dealing with survival, aren't we? You know, instinct. Uh, if when it's done well, like people say, live by your instincts, I'm like, bad idea. That's the fight or flight world. You, you're in survival. But if you don't dismiss your instincts, those are protecting you. That's good. You know, fight or flight as necessary. Don't stick off that curb and your your whole body sensory system saying, nope, that's not a good idea, right? To do certain things. But it's really intuition, which are, is not a synonym for instinct. Instincts is kind of a lower chakra. Intuition to me is a heart chakra. Interestingly enough, I was doing a little study recently and they were saying intuition's the third eye. I'm like, wrong. I don't know where you got that from, but you were wrong. That is insight. This is knowing. And your Taurus tube is hitting your heart chakra, right? So when you're in your heart chakra, your intuition's really uh, strong because it's your radar field. It's like you're, you know, so that kind of, that's my firm conviction on that. And it, um, it happens in your body, not in your head, in your mind. It's exactly. And it, it's, I think astrology helps people move from thinking about stuff to feeling stuff. It, yeah. it, it helps you align with your whole body, your, exactly. your head and your body. There's sensory feeling, there's sensory feeling, there's instinctual knowing, there's knowledge, there's reason, rationale, all which are wonderful. Everything is just great, right? Mm -hmm. And yet intuition is that I know I'm a soul. I know there's a God. I know there's reincarnation, mm -hmm. uh, that thing, right? Now, it sounds a little strong to say it like that, but, you know, I, I do always ask my clients so you believe that your soul incarnate who reincarnates yes every time you know it's like yeah of course <laughs> get up next you know kind of thing but i'm also humbly respectful to the fact that not everybody adheres to that and so they don't aren't in touch as fully with their in intuition i call that in okay uh so i'm not here to say they should be but hopefully with the work I do, I've been able to increase it. Because uh, the heart chakra is not sentiment. It can be like empathy and compassion, I think, are a part of it. And that's really wonderful. But the deeper thing about the heart chakra is it's self-honesty. It's the courage to be self-honest. It is the capacity to see beyond one's ego projections. And uh, it puts one in, it's what they mean by the lion heart. You become more, well, bold in being you. You're, you're a little bit more uh, um, determined not to yield. So. so it's kind of a mixture of things, right? You're aware, you're awake, you're... Uh, you have that. People who are living their self-actualization, that's what you're doing in your way, mm -hmm. right? And you're talking with all kinds of people and you're, I'm sure you're after meaningful communications, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's a sharing of, which I do appreciate um, that, uh, but I'm just generally uh, imagining when I say that, but I don't mean to tell you what you're doing. I'm just saying. Uh, no, it's it's yeah. true. I yeah. get the opportunity to speak with all kinds of people. Right. And this has been amazing being able to have this conversation with you, Michael. Um, yeah. how 
uh, what is the what is your website URL? And I'll make sure that I put it in the show notes so that people Sunstar. can reach out to you. Thank you, Jill. Sun Sunstar Astrology. Okay. Yeah. Sunstar Astrology, just like that. Dot com. Dot com. Perfect. Yeah. And on and the website, they can get the under horoscope. There's free horoscopes and uh, or they can go um, with the paid version. I do like uh, reading packages or coaching packages, which mm -hmm. if people get. They 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 kind of get the membership for free. So I make it uh, attractive for people. Everybody likes a sale, I think. Yeah. And on the end, on the learn end of the website is where uh, we're building that section. It's already there, but we're now going to create rooms. Each like room will be a different emphasis of master classes. The master classes are designed to provide a very rich fertilizer of consciousness that whether or not a person studies astrology, but if they do, they'll go, wow, now I have the paradigm. That's what I want to give people. I want it when you Oh, you know, I love that. Yeah, you get this because it's learning astrology, well, it, it's it's kind of not uh, entirely elementary, but it kind of is, <laughs> believe it or not. But it's the worldview that and the paradigm within which it operates that's a little bit more sophisticated, and and when but it's also where it's really juicy, <laughs> kind of like oh, okay, here we go. Uh, so, um, but uh, yeah, sun so there's. So there's a starting place and a place to jump off from, I guess is the way to put it, with astrology. I mean, most basic start... with me is, is, you know, getting a horoscope, but of course, uh, getting, you know, the horoscope I write every week, but getting a reading, of course, is, you know, more immediately uh, precise and zeroing in on you. And I do, I'm, I, when I started studying astrology, I'm you know, 16 years old, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little older than that now. And uh, so I've literally been studying it for ever since 44 years. Uh, and, you know, um, 10 years after I started studying it, I thought, I'm going to do this. I mean, I, I'm just, I can't get away from it, let alone anything else. As soon as I awakened to astrology, I, like, I could see everybody's sign, you know, Pisces, right? I'm like, and I have a lot of... Virgo and Scorpio and stuff. Anyway, which makes me insightful into human nature, interested, right? Interested. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, oh, I can, ping, 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 ping. you know, and then I was beginning to not get uh, cliche about it, but noticing the patterns of how people look, the eyes, and I can, oh, you're a Leo, you're a Pisces, or you can see it in their facial, you know, right? Not always, but often. Uh, and, uh, but um, I'm also a numerologist. Uh, like, in other words, I studied astrology, tarot, and numerology simultaneously because there were three languages that helped each other. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, I mo astrology to me is the most powerful of all three. But the other two are always there. And I'm always, you know, it's hard to kind of shade it. It's kind of like speaking a few languages, you know, you speak French, uh, English, German, say, or whatever the three or four are, but you you can speak them so fast, it, it doesn't matter. You it's seamlessly you can jump from one conversation to the next. It's a really wonderful thing to do, right? So I, I'm always impressed by people who do speak three, four, five, six languages, right? And especially if they do that well, uh you know but even three is something right english yeah. French, and right you know what i mean so that's uh totally. but anyway don't mean to get off track there uh before we go but yes uh it has been fun and uh i know we can talk so, more maybe we'll do that one day huh i think that would be awesome what is the one thing that you hope the audience takes away from this conversation we've covered so much ground <laughs> just remember that we are are conscious beings living in a conscious universe and it's on purpose and our life is deeply woven with purpose and that purpose is measurable 
to a very fine degree. And not only is it measurable in terms of your nature and personality that you have, it also is uh, accurate to what your destiny is about and all of the various details about that, because destiny has a larger umbrella to it than a sort of a narrow thing. There's a whole, you know, all, all the different parts of us, like you can be a, a, a daughter, a mother, a sister, a friend, a neighbor, you know, and, and then a professional or this and goes on, right? So we wear different hats. There's all of that uh, are kind of aspects of it. But um, then it can also talk about where you're at in time. And it really can get zeroing in on, you know, helping you ha make better choices is the key thing. That's what it's all about. And the self-actualization is what makes life fun and fulfilling. Who doesn't want to do their thing and, and feel abundant and wealthy even, right, about it? That's sure, of course. I'm always helping people on that very practical side because you got to pay the bills, right? So exactly. it comes down, yeah, it comes down to rubber on the road kind of consciousness <laughs> in the final analysis. If it's not practical, I thought it's not really helpful. That so has to be woven into the everyday life. So that's it's a bit of a long uh, winded perspective on what I want them to take away. But there it is. Yeah, it was perfect. Thank you so much, Michael. Okay. You're welcome, Jill. My pleasure. Thank you. All the best. Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind the scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at the U World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com.